right next to Fan Friendly Fighter, you're going to see a picture of Lucas Matisse. He is all action. He comes forward, and I think he has endeared himself to boxing fans, even in those close losses, because they respect what he did. He has won three fights in a row. His last eight wins have come by way of KO or TKO, coming off his signature victory in his last fight back on June 23rd, a fifth round technical knockout against the former WBC super featherweight and lightweight world champion, Alberto Soto, who had never been knocked down in his 15 year pro career. And get this, the loss, well, it denied Soto his 60th career victory and ended his 15th fight win streak. So you know Lucas Matisse is the man Lucas Matisse, whole family's fight. He's come here tonight to close the show. He don't want no more if ands, and buts about it. He want to knock a Jose out tonight. He want to have a great, big breakout fight tonight. I can just imagine the battles for bathroom time, Alan. Their household, father, mother, brother Walter was a pro, and the sister's still active. Yeah, so is that. And his nephews are, uh, <laughs> yeah. are boxers as well. Brother Walter, a very top uh, uh, contender. So yeah, that and trying to get seconds at dinner, not so easy. He could very well be undefeated, disputed setbacks against Devin Alexander and Zab Judah. He's already talked about the fact he would like to one day rematch Alexander. Here is 32-year-old Alusha Gun, the Gun Ajose, who really redefines the uh, axiom, patience is a virtue, Al. He has been the number one contender for the WBC Super Lightweight title for, well, it seems forever and a day, coming off a 12-round unanimous decision win against Ali Cheva in a WBC elimination bout in his last fight, going back to September of 2011, his Showtime debut on Showbox. And again, when you hear WBC title eliminator, that usually means you get a title <laughs> shot next time. Yeah, right? and here we are a year later, and a key point, a very key point, he has not fought in almost a year. So that layoff is a big issue for him. But that was a very impressive performance, as you can see here. He couldn't be looser coming in for this probably most important moment of his career. Mark, the fact that he hasn't been in action since last year and really only had three fights in the last three years, how do you think that will alter the way he begins this fight? I think, I think it plays a, a big role in this fight. But he says, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about it. No ring rust. If he punch, I punch. He throw a right hand, I throw a right hand or left hook. So I think he's very excited. He's going to be, he's coming to fight tonight. The 140 pound division <laughs> full of plenty of compelling and exciting characters. Let's take a look at Al Bernstein's list. All right, you know, if he could just be more animated. Well, these are, this is my list of what I believe are the top 140 pounders. Now, we're going to be focusing in on this division on Showtime. Matisse and a Jose tonight. Then, of course, we're going to have the Danny Garcia rematch against Eric Morales. And when you look down that list, what you find are a bunch of fighters very close in ability. A number of them undefeated. They really could throw a blanket over this whole group, and you'd have fighters that were very, very close in ability. Of course, this fight is for the WBC Interim Super Lightweight Championship, Lucas Matisse. And Alushagan Ajosi. Let's go to the tail of the tape for this, the main event of the evening. The numbers are almost identical, and so, you have to look past the numbers as our friend Steve Farhood does on Showbox. And what's not on there is the fact that uh, Josie is a lefty and the fact that Matisse uh, is a fighter who has probably fought a lot better opposition than him. And now the uh, weights heading into this fight tonight. Of course, they weighed in yesterday at 139 pounds for Matisse. He's put on another 10 pounds tonight. I think I think he's a bit, he's the bigger, stronger guy. And for uh, Jose, he also came in at 139 pounds, but he's only put on four extra pounds tonight, which means he's going to be more elusive. And we are set for tonight's main event for the WBC Interim Super Lightweight Championship. Here once again, the maestro, the microphone, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr.
Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Golden Boy Promotions and Showtime. We are sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina, and AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network, AT&T Rethink Possible. This bout is brought to you in conjunction with Dabella Entertainment, Gary Shaw Productions, and Arano Box Promotions. And we are sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor in Attendance, Robert Lenhart. Along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the chairman is Skip Avancino, commissioners Francisco Aguilar, Bill Brady, TJ Day, and Pat Lundvall, and our timekeepers at the bell also keeping count of the knockdowns, Steve Esposito and Ernie Hauregi. Our physicians at ringside tonight, Dr. William Berliner, Dr. James Game, Dr. Michael Gunter, and Dr. Vicky Mazzorana. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside, all from Las Vegas, Nevada. Adelaide Bird, Robert Hoyle, and Jerry Roth. Introducing our referee in charge, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Russell Mora. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Interim Super Lightweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, it's showtime! Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with blue and white trim. Jan Lee joining us from Trelu Chebut, Argentina. He weighed in at a ready 139 pounds. With a record of 31 wins, two losses and one no decision, he has 29 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the WBC Continental Americas champion, ranked the number two super lightweight in in the world by the WBC, introducing the hard-hitting Lucas Martin Matisse. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with green trim, fighting out of New York City by way of Lagos, Nigeria. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 139 pounds, undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 30 wins, no losses, 14 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the British and Commonwealth champion and the WBC number one super lightweight contender, introducing the undefeated Olusegun Ajose. And our referee in charge, now to give instructions, Russell Mora. Okay, centering. Okay, anything here is good. Gentlemen, the navel is the line. Anything below the navel is a foul. We went over the rules already. All I want to remind you is protect yourself at all times. Obey yeah. my commands at yeah, all times. Anyway. God bless. Touch up. So a huge opportunity for both of these fighters, as we mentioned at the top of the telecast, uh, each uh, experiencing bad luck in, in various forms, and we are set for what could be a scintillating short story or a multiple chapter <laughs> classic like the uh, book, 30 years, 30 undeniable <laughs> truth now. We've got Lucas Matisse and Oloshagan Ajose set to go here, round one. Ajose in the white and green trunk Matisse in the black trunks with white trim. Lucas Matisse has not been the quickest starter in the world. With a fighter who is coming in off a one-year layoff, you might expect him to pick it up, and the fans are already chiming in. One fan uh, giving uh, a lot of support to a Jose. And conversely, Matisse getting some love, being called one of the most exciting 140 pounders, and no doubt about that. Next to maybe the guy that was supposed to be in tonight's main event, Randall Bailey, one of the hardest punchers in the sport. Yeah, he can whack, that's for sure. The Lead left hook to the body by Matisse. 
What I'm noticing once again is that we have a southpaw fighting a right-hander, which is the left hand fighting a right-hander. So we'll see a lot of uh, a lot of those guys stepping on each other's feet, and I'm looking to see that early. But what I'm noticing is that uh, a Jose is leaning forward and not punching, not using his jab. He's, he's leaning in with a right with a wide right hook, and you cannot let. Lucas Martin, Matisse hit you with no open shots. But Jose moving ahead now. But Jose has very good hand speed and he will throw lots of combinations. And there's an example. Though those punches, some of them are wide. This is Matisse's 10th fight against a southpaw. So a lot of experience against left-handers. Jose unloading the one-two from the southpaw stance. Beginning to work the jab. Of course, the one thing with Matisse, he's always going to be there, always coming forward. It takes a lot to discourage him. I think this is actually a more active round one for Matisse than we're used to seeing. He's and he talked about that in the fighter meeting, saying the fact that, uh, you know, he realized, especially after the, the controversial losses to Alexander and Judah, that he needed to start pressing the action more. And we saw that against Soto. Yeah, we did. And, you know, a little movement by... Uh, by uh, Jose. Less than a minute remaining here in the opening round. Both guys are throwing some big punches early on. I'm looking forward to seeing who's gonna land the biggest left hook or the biggest right hand. Both guys are throwing some great shots. Right hand that was caught by Matisse. Coming in close, Matisse going over top with the left hand. Nice exchange, and a Jose backed up Matisse with the left. Oh, punch behind the head there. 20 seconds left in the opening round. Plenty of action here. Matisse again working the body. Less than 10 seconds remaining of what has been an entertaining opening three minutes as Matisse caught him with the right hand and Jose tripped over the foot of Matisse as well. Let's take a look at the keys to victory, Al, beginning with Jose. Well, Jose's got to keep his hands up because that right hand will come in if he doesn't. And Sometimes he's a wide puncher. We saw a little bit of that. I think he can land the uppercut when Matisse moves forward. Now, for Lucas Matisse, patience is important. And I say be patient as always, because he is patient. And even though he started quicker, he's still patient. Don't bend forward where the uppercut can hit you. And that right hand, that's the money punch. There was some awkward action in uh, toward the end of round one. Mark talked about how with the lefty and the righty, they get caught up. They did. That was a nice right hand, though, by Matisse in that exchange. You gotta wipe that again. Coach, coach, get that off. Too much. Good, good. We are set for round two here at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. This is for the WBC Interim Super Lightweight Championship. Oshagana Jose in the white and green trunks. Lucas Matisse in the black and white trunks. And again, they meet in the center of the ring. Fast and furious action here. Quick exchanges. And, and once again, we talked about the left-hander fighting the right-hander. Lucas Matisse want to keep his left foot on the outside of a Jose right foot to stop him from going around to the right side. Both guys are playing footsie over there to see who's going to get the position. <laughs> and of course, when you have the orthodox against the southpaw, you got to be careful of those uh, head clashes. Get him up. Get now him up. Jose working the body, referee Mora imploring him to keep those shots above the belt line. Jose. Not as much. Oh, good. There's that overhand right. But Jose has not had exactly as much movement as I thought he might. He's in the pocket against Matisse. That's a little dangerous. And as you mentioned, Al Matisse very patient thus far as uh, a Jose getting a little wild. Lunging in. He's more in the pocket, but he's still very comfortable there. He, he's outworking Matisse, but here's Matisse. Matisse beginning to unload on a Jose, but those were all on the arm. But still aggressive here and again beginning to unload. And now it's a Jose going to the body in the right hand upstairs on Matisse. And a Jose gets a good exchange in. There's a nice uppercut from a Jose. And, and, and Matisse is a great body puncher. And you saw him whack him to the body. It's turning into a very nice yeah. fight as we thought it might. Yeah, we 
promise fistic fury we're seeing it in this one thus far round two a minute 15 seconds left matisse has a jose on the ropes working the body with the left hook to the liver a jose holding on the arm and gets that overhand right for his efforts and matisse beginning to work away on a jose on the ropes don't want to be there against lucas matisse ever and Matisse is the type of guy that's going to outwork you, I'm going to hit you, I'm going to hit you, until you, you you slow down. And that's what he's doing early on in the fight. He's touching a Jose. A Jose puts himself in the corner. Matisse welcoming that, working him, rocking him now with the right hand to the head. And Matisse beginning to pick apart a Jose in the corner. Mora stepping in, a Jose now wanting to hold on. Similar to what we saw in our opening contest. And on the break, Matisse with the right hand gets the warning from referee Mora. And does a Jose know how to box? Is this a guy that knows how to box or do you want to take it? Or do you want to give us as good as he can take, Mo? Now he beginning to use his footwork, but it's Matisse working away on the body. Now a Jose comes back, another left hand of the body, a right hand upstairs by Matisse. He is firing on all cylinders here with five seconds left in the second round. And a great round for Matisse. Well, Matisse has had great success against left-handers. And let's go into the Wayback Machine and take a look at Matisse against Zab Judah. Le another left-hander landing a big right to put him down. Even though he ended up losing a very close and controversial decision, that was late in the fight. Against Devin Alexander, another classy left-hander. He would again land the right hand, and this sent Alexander down. And of course, we just saw him against the Josie use his right hand very effectively, and there it is, with the Josie on the ropes. There were also some great left hooks mixed in there, but that right hand is powerful, and there it is, doing serious damage, and he almost had a Josie down in that round. In his last fight, Matisse stopped the durable Humberto Soto for the first time in his career, and when we saw him knock down Alexander, that was the first time that that St. Louis fighter had been down in his career. Neither a Jose or Matisse have been down as pros. That could change here tonight. And Matisse has knocked down everybody that he fought. Yeah, he claims that Virtually. except for one fight, he's knocked out down at least just everybody. Can't confirm that, but he's knocked down most of them, that's for sure. And the Jose's coming out. He's not on his bicycle, but he's on his skateboard. <laughs> Take a look at the power punches here on the show stats. Yeah, most of those came in that last round, and it was uh, a dramatic round for Matisse. Matisse just misses with that signature right hand. A Jose wanting to use footwork now goes to the body, then the right hand upstairs. But it's Matisse staying compact, gets tagged with the right hand. Another right hand by a Jose through the guard. Matisse lands the right to the body. Jose, if he could establish that jab a little, might keep Matisse off him, but boy, Matisse is getting him with those big punches. Yeah, and doing a great job as Matisse of mixing up his attack, working the body, then going upstairs. A Jose again along the ropes where he does not want to be against a heavy hitter like Matisse. I think one of Jose's skateboard wheels came off because he stopped boxing <laughs> and moving, and you don't want to do that with Matisse. They wanted him to go to the body, Matisse, early to slow down the movement, ultimately, of a Jose. He's done it. He knocked DeMarcus Corley down four times with body shots in one fight, Matisse. So he can go down to that body. And there was a Jose going to the body, then rips the Good right work. hand of the body. Nice combination put together by a Jose, responded by Matisse. But a Jose staying in the pocket, staying busy, firing off the right hand. Give a Jose credit for pulling himself together in this round. Gets backed up with that oh right my. and a left hook to the body. A Jose, hands are low. And again through the guard is the right hand, left hook to the lever and now in the clinch. Referee Mora and some grappling along the ropes. 50 seconds left in another entertaining third round and Matisse unloading the right hand and a Jose in trouble. And the left uppercut. A Jose, though, fighting back. He's a warrior, and we see why he has never gone down in his career. He's still throwing big punches yes. while Matisse is still coming forward. I said one of the wheels came off the skateboard. It looked like he must put it back on. He's moving again. 
We promised fistic fireworks. We promised one of the better fights of the year. And so far, this WBC interim super lightweight championship bout is delivering on all fronts. Matisse and Ojose getting a warning from referee Russell Mora. Five seconds left. Three rounds are in the books. Round four straight ahead from here in Las Vegas. One of the misnomers about power punches, punches like Matisse, is sometimes people think they don't throw combinations a lot of punches. Matisse is a hard worker. Look at that combination. He doesn't throw just one punch at a time. He doubles with the right. He's still throwing shots. Some of them are wild, some don't land, but he keeps you busy with his punches. He's not just looking for one big right hand. He's working to get that right hand in. And if a Jose don't put his hands up, he's going to learn today. Yeah, you're right. This is the day to learn. He's going to learn today. But at 32, if you learn, it's not so good. In addition to being a professional prize fighter, Lucas Matisse is a tattoo artist, owns a small tattoo business in Argentina, and thus far in this fight has done a great job of tattooing a Jose who comes out. I knew you were going to go all there. Cylinders. You knew I was going to go there. And a Jose, though, comes out the way we knew he would come out here in round four. Very aggressive matchup. No quarter asked, none given. A Jose jumping into Matisse now. Matisse bobbing, blocking that shot. Fires off the jab, gets stopped with the right. Let's take a look at the power punches from round three here on the show oh stats. My. Yeah, Matisse having a monstrous round. A round that almost could border on a two-point round if you felt like you could give that to him without a knockdown. You know, Josie still, he lands three, four punches. It doesn't uh, really push Matisse yeah, back at all. have the power that Matisse does and no knockdown. A lefty fighting a righty. Their feet is going to get tangled a lot. But I'm surprised that Josie is still okay. staying in the pocket with Matisse. Yeah, Matisse's right hand is a shotgun. And also he's moving he's to his moved, left. Yes, and moving to the ropes, which yeah. he has to avoid. As Matisse again clinches with a Jose. Stop. Referee Mora calls for the break Time. and you a timeout. Hold. You can't hold, okay? Let's go. Let's Warning go. a Jose about the hold. And as a lefty, you don't want to move to Matisse right. You want to keep moving to your right. Yep. To try right. to take some and of the power off the right hand. Eric exactly. Raskin, who was a guest on my show earlier this week, asking Great everyone, writer. reminding us never to let Matisse punch him <laughs> to the body. And really, Matisse, as effective as he has been to the body, he's also been very good upstairs with that lead left hook. And that's why Matisse is great against lefties. Not just that he lands the right, he stops them with the left hook to the body of the head and stops their movement to the right. If you can, you have to be one of two things to beat Matisse, a master boxer or someone that can hurt him. There he goes. And a Jose stumbled but did not go down. A Jose is a one tough fighter from Nigeria as he got rocked with that right hand but did not go down. Matisse stalking him now. And a Jose firing back with a one-two. Matisse coming back with a left hand to the body. Unbelievable action here in Las Vegas. He's got the wheels back on the skateboards, ladies and gentlemen. He's moving in boxing. He's twisting and turning. Well, you know, he landed. Uh, Josie's landed some very big punches this round. And but he just can't right stop him. From Matisse. Jose working the body and again coming to the clinch. Leaning is Matisse. Whipping off the left hand of the body, then going upstairs, a right cross. 13 seconds left in round four. A Jose staying in the pocket, firing up punches of his own. Oh, another left hook to the body, and that has got to begin to take its toll, especially as this fight progresses. The investment in the body shots. Well, the awkward action that we've seen a little bit of in this match, and it, it doesn't diminish how good this match has been. It's just, as Mark said, the lefty and the righty thing. And that was Josie down, not an official uh, knockdown. But Josie was badly hurt at this juncture. 
uh, in the fight. Now, Matisse, even though he throws that right sometimes very wide, generates tremendous power. But in the midst of all this, Jose getting raked over the coals, he still came back with lots of combinations and some big punches in the round, which demonstrates how tough this fighter is and how resilient he is. And that's one of the reasons why he was rated number one for four yep. years. Nobody Unde wanted to fight this guy. Undefeated at 30 and 0. 14 wins by way of KO as we get set for round five. Matisse 31 and 2 with one. No decision. 29 wins by way of knockout. And remember, his last eight victories have all come inside the distance. A Jose in the white and green trunks, Matisse in the black and white trunks. It's round five, scheduled for 12 for the WBC Interim Super Lightweight Championship. The WBC number one contender, a Jose, and the number two contender, Matisse. Matisse had good sparring down in Argentina, sparring with uh, Martin Koji, who is the son of Juan Koji, who is a longtime world champion, an excellent fighter from Argentina. And, uh, you know, he does well against lefties, and we're seeing it again here tonight. And Matisse has trained in the past with Sergio Martinez, who isn't uh, a bad self either. Not a bad lefty. I think he's okay. And the guy the sitting next to me is a pretty good lefty, yeah. Mark Johnson. Yeah, you see the number of punches that uh, Matisse Ooh, has it. landed, and it's been dramatic. But half of those to the body, I think. Jose staying busy, but again oh. gets backed up on the ropes, and it's Matisse unloading as a Jose looking to clinch. How is a Jose still standing? He gets wobbled, and then somehow he comes back with punches. Watch his foot, watch his foot. I mean, he should have gone down at some point in this fight, but he is not. And he's still punching hard yes. every fight that he's throwing. Every every punch that he's throwing, he's throwing hard. I Once agree. again, the, 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 the wheels are back on the skateboard. Good analysis from Paul Malignaggi, who is tweeting at ringside. He doesn't want a Jose to get yep. trapped against the ropes. He's absolutely right. And of course, Paul Malignaggi, a great mover in the ring, who can avoid those traps. Oh, the left uh -oh. Hook. And a Jose no, again no. in trouble, but hanging on as Matisse has come so very close to putting a Jose on the canvas for the first time in his career. Oh, wow. Double left hook. His right hand is down? What would I say? He will learn today. And a Jose just comes right back punching. This is a great fight, ladies and gentlemen, that we're watching today. 55 seconds left in the fifth round and all action slugfest that we promised here on Showtime Championship Boxing. But it's been Lucas Matisse, the power puncher, who's been getting the best of the undefeated Nigerian. Now based out of New York City, he's still an active instructor in the Nigerian army and wants to bring boxing back to prominence in Nigeria. But he has to pass this very tough test here tonight. Left hook from Matisse. And now Jose comes back with a left hook of his own. You got it, you got it. And again, a Jose trips and falls, so he's been down twice, but none of them ruled an official knockdown. Although that, I'm sure, would surprise Matisse and his fans as we are at the end of the round. Great action tonight and more great action coming up next Saturday, September 15th at 9 p.m. Eastern and 6 Pacific. We are going to celebrate Mexican Independence Day with guaranteed fireworks. Canelo Alvarez against Jose Zito Lopez in a battle for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship. The WBC Super Featherweight title is on the line when Johnny Gonzalez fights Daniel Ponce de Leon. Marcos Maidana versus Jesus Soto Caras in a 12-round welterweight matchup. And Leo Santa Cruz takes on Eric Morrell for the IBF Bantamweight World title. Four great fights coming your way next Saturday. The prelims will be available on Show Extreme. Showbox, the new generation, returns Friday, September 21st with two super Bantamweight fights. Unbeaten Jonathan Romero takes on Efrain Esquivas and Roman Morales fights Jonathan Arellano. Saturday, October 20th, Showtime Championship Boxing comes to you from the brand new Barclays Center in Brooklyn with three championship fights. And Saturday, November 10th, it's more Showtime Championship Boxing with Abner Matas fighting Anselmo Moreno for the WBC Super Bantamweight title. That's a lot of good fights.
<laughs> and we are watching a very good one for the WBC Interim Super Lightweight Championship. It's round six between Lucas Matisse and Oloshigun Ajose. You know, we're not overstating the toughness of Ajose because when you're ringside sit is sitting here seeing the power of those Matisse punches, he is whacking him with some big shots. And what does make it impressive is that Ajose is not just surviving, he's punching back and punching back hard, but just can't keep Matisse off. He's trying to establish the jab and there's a rapid fire three punch combination by Jose gets stuck with a jab by Matisse that backs him up now strafing the body is a Jose and Matisse comes forward Matisse is like a dog trying to trace a bone he's coming forward and a Jose is definitely punching he throwing great shot and big shot but look at Matisse I'm here I'm here I'm here on our Twitter account a Jose is indeed a warrior and it's true he keeps coming forward despite Matisse, you know, just walking through all of his punches and doing damage with his own. And again, he finds himself on the ropes. And a left hand over top there by Ajose. Blocks that right hand from Matisse. Again, being on the ropes is so difficult for Ajose. You know, Ajose's waited so long for a, a fight at Boxing Center stage. That's one of the reasons why he is leaving it all in that ring. He is not going to waste this opportunity if he, if he can avoid it. But it's, he's unable to, to hurt Matisse thus far. It's the problem, I don't, no one has hurt Matisse. He's never been down in his career, probably never been really hurt. And if you can't hurt him, how do you stop him? Even in his two losses, very, very close. He fought master boxers, Zab Judah and Alexander box very well, but many believe he won both those fights. I'm one of those people. Final minute of the sixth round, scheduled for 12 for the WBC Interim Super Lightweight Championship. And again, Ajose with two punches, but one punch by Matisse backs him up. Ajose goes with the right hand of the body, then upstairs to the head. Oh, three left hooks by Matisse. There's the jab in the right hand of the body. These are some banging left hooks, some 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 big shots, and uh, Jose is still here. Now uh, Jose has Matisse in the corner. Matisse able to bob and weave, and Matisse says, "Is that all you got? Come on!" Oh, Lead oh. left hook by Matisse, right hand by Matisse. Ten seconds left, and you cannot question the heart and courage of a Jose, but it's been the power and volume of Lucas Matisse through six rounds in Las Vegas. These replays are really the fight in microcosm because it's a Jose trying to keep Matisse off of him landing punches, but then Matisse just comes forward and ultimately gets inside enough to show big punches like that left hook. And a Jose, with all the problems he's had in this round, in this fight, has never stopped punching but the pressure, and you see how smart Matisse is as a fighter. He's not a one-trick pony. There's the jab, we saw the uppercut during that round. Very clever and talented all-around fighter. The bell round is seven underway from the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas for the WBC Interim Super Lightweight Championship. Lucas Matisse in the black and white trunk. Soloshigana Jose in the white and green. Get him up, get him up, get him up. A Jose coming forward now and firing off a three punch combination, oh. the majority of which was blocked. A Jose showcasing some showmanship against Ali Chaba. Not too much time to do that in this fight. He had it early in the match, but then once he started to get whacked with those big punches, he said, I better settle down to business. Matisse, once again, he's starting to lead with the big right hand now. Like you said, Al, he's not a one-trick pony. He's, he's working on a jab, a right hand. And guess what? Hey, uh, Jose is back on his feet, ladies and the gentlemen. The second half of this title fight has begun. And let's take a look at the unofficial Showtime scoring at the halfway point. Except for Steve, who's given a round to uh, a Jose. We've all got it. Mark and I have it a shutout. You can make a case for giving a Jose a round. 
He's definitely been right there. Staying very busy, but again, it's been the, the power and the damage by Matisse. It has come very close to dropping a Jose in this fight, but a Jose now again along the ropes, wanting to clinch to stop the onslaught of Matisse. A Jose is in great shape to take these big punches for the last six rounds. He's in great shape. He's had, took some big shots, and he's still punching away. Hands free, hands free. These two fighters have over 230 amateur fights between them. Of course, Josie was in the Olympics in 2000. They're well-schooled, they're well-conditioned, and it's a joy to watch them fight. Oscar De La Hoya, the golden boy, saying it all. Wow, Lucas is a bad man. And Matisse stalking a Jose on the ropes again. The left hook upstairs into the body. But a Jose trying to cover up and now firing off some rapid fire shots of his own. And while he's connecting, he's not hurting Matisse. No, in that, in that case, he wheeled off the ropes. The right tactic. Oh, oh and there's a one two from Matisse and a Jose still standing. How is he taking these punches? These are some great shots up and down, and he's still here. Like Oscar said, Matisse is a bad man. 23 seconds left in round seven. Matisse continues to work the body of Jose going upstairs. Matisse bobbing and weaving, landing the right. You know, the worst luck of this is he drew, uh, Jose drew Matisse as an opponent. 10 seconds left in another barn burner of a round. Lucas Matisse and Alosha Gunna Jose. And while we are being treated to a very exciting fight, some of the fans on their feet here in Las Vegas, coming up this Wednesday, it's the premiere of the new season of Inside the NFL at 9 p.m. Very much looking forward to the fifth season of Inside the NFL on Showtime. In the last round, we see the variety again from Matisse, starting the combination with the left uppercut, which is a little unorthodox. Starts it with the uppercut, it lands, it grazes him, then he lands the right hand behind it, and then he's getting ready to follow with the hook, but Jose's not in the position, so what does he do? He throws the right hand. He's fun to watch. One thing what I'm noticing is that uh, Jose has taken some big shots. But he's rolling just a little bit with a lot of them. So they're not landing as flush as maybe if they would, he would stop them. So he's rolling with just a little bit of them. It's a very good point. The bell in round eight, scheduled for 12 for the WBC Interim Super Lightweight Championship. A Jose coming forward now, lands the left and lands another left hand. Matisse trying to swim in, looking for that body shot. There's the overhand right. This is a great fight. This is a bomb burner. I'm definitely looking forward to see what's going to happen next week. This is a bomb burner here tonight. Yeah, we're having fun here, and you're right. We're going to see it. Uh, the man that, the two men that, uh, the winner of that fight, that one of these people would like to fight when uh, Garcia fights Eric Morales. Again, that's a rematch that was a contract term. Morales losing the title on the scales then getting defeated by Garcia, but it is coming up October 20th. And you're right, Matisse or Jose would love a chance at that full title as we take a look at the show stats when it comes to punches. Well, Matisse doubling the number of punches landed. What's significant is you see how many of Jose's throwing. He's been active as those numbers update live, and it's not as if a Jose's been not active. Look at him throw a triple right hook. And if you notice before the triple right hook, Matisse want to slow him down a little bit more. He's throwing a good left hook to his hip to slow him down just a little bit more so he can be uh, uh, easy for the pickings. A minute and a half left in round eight. A good round for a Jose coming yeah. forward and landing some punches. But just as I say that, Matisse is able to land a combination. But again, a Jose. You know, brushing it, Matisse's it's face. It's criminal that Jose hasn't had a chance on boxing center stage until this point, watching how good a fighter he is. His his bad luck is he drew Lucas Matisse as an opponent, who I think might be the best 140-pounder in the world. Double left hook by Matisse in the right hand. And again, a Jose backs up. A Jose now with the overhand left. 
Less than a minute remaining in round eight. An uppercut from Ajose. And uh, but one again, the, Matisse walks through. One of the questions as we look at this, could Ajose, by hanging around in this fight, might he hurt Matisse at some point in it? He's still in it, so he has the chance to do it. I don't know. No one has. He's still in it, and I'm looking forward to seeing Ajose later on. Not just this fight. I'm looking forward to see oh, more fights with Ajose. the right oh, hand, but the feet what's get feet? tangled what's up. Similar to what happened earlier in the fight. And it is common when a southpaw fights an orthodox fighter. A Jose get along the ropes and his head gets popped back like an old school Pez dispenser out. 20 <laughs> seconds left in round eight. And he's moving to a uh, Matisse right hand again. Every time he's moved to Matisse right, Matisse land a big right hand. A Jose had to move to his right hand. And there is uh, some semblance of the wild punches that a Jose is known for. In fact, tonight he has been keeping it a little more compact, but again, unable to really do much damage on Matisse here after eight rounds. But a better round for a Jose. Well, this is about as, as exciting a one-sided fight as you can have. And here's one of the reasons. A Jose, you'll, know, you'll see how he throws not one body punch, the right hook, not two, but three. He triples with the right hook. And it's the right way to go and lands them. He landed every one of those punches with conviction. He pronated them well. He put his body into it. It just didn't slow Matisse down. And later in the round, we would see Matisse come back with that uppercut and then the right hand. That's been a combination that's worked for him very well in this fight. Yeah. Mar, I see why nobody didn't want to fight a Jose. This is the reason why he's been the number one contender for four years. Look at this, this fight that he's pitting up tonight. Showcasing a lot of heart, and you're right, a very tough out, and has been one of the most avoided fighters in the 140-pound division. Running into Lucas Matisse here tonight on Showtime, round number nine underway. And again, immediately, they go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, a Jose with the right hand, catching Matisse. Matisse now. Coming Wait, forward, back, back in the clinch, no, no, Russell no, no, Moore no, no, calling no, no, for the break. No, 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 do that. Let's go, let's go. Some gamesmanship from a Jose with a side headlock. That last round was the first one I gave to a Jose. Now, I know Steve Farnett had, had a round earlier for a Jose. I don't know if he gave that one to him or you did, Mark, but I thought it was a good round for a Jose. And a Jose, great job working the body, going upstairs, and then Matisse comes back with a left hand. Malignaggi <laughs> tweeting that Matisse is like a bad nightmare you want to wake up from but can't. Paulie is always colorful. A wordsmith. He's a wordsmith. And it goes back to, like Al said, the, the, the worst thing that a Jose did was draw Matisse. I can think of a lot of 140 pounders he would be hell on wheels against. Uh, and he is tonight. It's just that Matisse is stronger and he throws those powerful combinations. Matisse fires off the straight left. A Jose comes back with his own combination. But again, not as much pop to his punches as Matisse. A minute 35 left in the ninth round. Another decent round so far for Jose, though. He's doing much better. Now, Matisse has only been 12 one time, and guess what? He lost that, though it was a decision he probably should have won. But a Jose definitely seems to be finding the second win, but again against the ropes, and then gets backed up with the right hand. And Matisse now a couple of left hooks, a third left hook, and a right hand for good measure. Okay, great. Step back, step back. No punches. No and the Jose backs up to the ropes, and his right hand is down. Less than a minute remaining in the ninth round. Straight right hand from Matisse. Again, backing a Jose up to the ropes, and Jose comes forward. I don't want to be neither one of these fighters after the fight. No. 45 seconds remaining in the ninth round. Both guys are landing some big punches, big right hands, big level. And there it is again. A Jose punches move, ties him up, and it's going to come right back. Watch your hand. The right hand and the left hand, their feet are constantly tangling. But there it is again. Tise with the right hand, and what Jose ducks underneath that one, back to the center of the ring. Gets caught with the left hook. Ten seconds remaining in this WBC Interim Super Lightweight Championship bouts ninth round. Left hook upstairs, working the bodies, Matisse along the ropes, and ends the round.
ground with a left hand, smiling at Ajotze. And here's what happened earlier on Showtime Extreme. Well, Daquan Arnett connected early and often with jabs and power punches on his way to an easy win over Jesus Tavera. Big right hands cause referee Tony Weeks ultimately to stop the contest at 137 here in round four. And veteran Ishe Smith, in addition as Arnett celebrated his win, Ishe Smith was on the uh, card and he knocked down Irving Garcia with a big right hand in round one and then controlled the rest of this 10 round decision, this fight to win a unanimous decision. At the end of the round, a monstrous left hook would be landed by Matisse. As he was against the ropes, Josie and uh, Russell Mora does a good job of getting in there quickly so no more punches are landed. That was a round in which Josie was doing pretty well in. Round 10. Scheduled for 12 for the WBC Indra Super Lightweight Championship. Mora Ranello along with Al Bernstein and Mark Two Sharp Johnson ringside for what has been a thriller. There's that triple right hook again by Josie. He's landing that punch so effectively. It just doesn't stop Matisse, but boy, he, he had a good round going in the last round before he started getting hurt near the end of the round at Josie. And again, a Jose waiting as he trips and falls one more time, has been waiting an interminable amount of time for an opportunity such as this to showcase his skills on Showtime. And while it's just for an interim title, oh, and he gets popped with the right hand. Has one on the left hand. And a Jose. Timeout called as Matisse hit him on the break. Now, Russell Moore wasn't quite there. Let's listen in. I got you. I got you. Okay, this is good, dude. You okay? That is an impressive okay. moment in Listen boxing. A Jose Let's could go. have tried to play this for some kind of foul against Matisse. It was a marginal thing. Wow, big left hook by Matisse. Instead, of Jose came back fighting. Good for him. And Matisse unloading on a Jose to the body, but a Jose keeps coming back. And two warriors who have both okay. tasted Wait, bad stop. luck in their careers, as we have talked about throughout the telecast, meeting here tonight and putting all of their talents on display. And while Matisse may be leading on the scorecards, one cannot discount the courage, the heart, okay, stop. and the guile of let a go, Joseph. Go, go. Mama, there goes that man. I got it, I got it. Here I come no, no, once no, again, go. all night long, I'm gonna be in your face, but a Jose comes right back. But look at Matisse. Like you said earlier, Al, I don't know if I've seen a more entertaining one-sided fight in a long time. It's amazing. And you know, in this round, the left hook has become the weapon of choice for Matisse. And it's been rocking at Jose. And Jose struggling. Less than a minute remaining in the 10th round. Left hand upstairs, a left hook to the body by Matisse. A Jose trying to keep him at bay with the jab again. Gets popped with the Stop. left hand. You okay? Now, Matisse attacking the body, going upstairs with the left hook and just pushing uh, Jose's head down. Moral warning, Matisse. He's looking for the big right hand now. Stiff jab from a Jose. But again, finds himself along the ropes. Now coming forward, Matisse gets tagged with a right hand, but cuts together a four punch combination of his own. And now a Jose opening up a misses. 10 seconds left in the 10th round. Matisse, oh, and fires off the right hand. Ajose's in the corner. Ajose goes down for the first time in his career. And Mora has stopped the fight. Lucas Matisse has won the WBC Interim Super Lightweight Championship.
An emotional Lucas Matisse receiving congratulations. A scintillating fight. A virtuoso performance for Matisse. You said, Al, that he may be the best 140-pound fighter in the sport. He is certainly in the discussion and could easily be. And tonight, he made his case. And the interesting thing to me about this fight is that he wore a Josie down and he fought a very good fighter tonight. Make no mistake about that. This is the biggest moment of his career. Early in this round, as we look at a Josie sitting on his stool and trying to absorb this unfortunate moment for him, there's the lead right hand that landed. That one was started the, the onslaught that would lead ultimately to the knockdown and knockout of a Josie. Now here's where they were, Russell Moore was jumping in to call a clinch and a left hook. Now I'm gonna tell you something, Russell Moore wasn't that close. Right. He may have just said stop, but he wasn't that close at that point. So you can't say Matisse's foul was blatant in any fashion and give a Josie credit for coming back, but then he would get nailed with these shots, and again, a right hand, that one wow. was the final cruncher, and for Lucas Matisse, another knockout yep. win on his resume. 30 knockout victories out of his 32 career wins. A Jose tasting defeat for the first time as he goes down for the first time in his career, Mark. It was a great fight. Uh, as you notice, even when he went down, he struggled to get back up. He wanted to finish the fight, as Al said, early on. Early on, he could have gave up early, but look at a happy Matisse. A jubilant Lucas Matisse. All of Argentina celebrating as he picks up the WBC Interim Super Lightweight Championship, and here's a special moment. Let's now go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. to make it official. Okay, there's some uh, technical difficulties with Jimmy Lennon Jr.'s microphone. We are uh, just awaiting the official decision. Let's uh, try it again, Jimmy. Okay, that won't work. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time of 2 minutes 59 seconds. In round number 10, a referee in charge, Russell Mora, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is now the interim WBC Super Lightweight Champion of the World. Lucas Martin Matisse. Let's take a look at the final show stats for both fighters in what was a terrific interim title tilt. You know, both men very active. Uh, the 689 figure for Medici impressive, and the 42% landed is impressive, and he landed a lot of power punches. And when you look at the Jose side of things, he threw almost 600 punches, or over 550, and he landed fairly well also. But the problem was the man he was facing was just too powerful, and as you look at this, disappointed at Jose, this guy has nothing to be ashamed of. All right, let's go up to uh, the ring, and here is Jim Gray. All right, Mo, thank you very much. Lucas, congratulations on your victory here this evening. This was one tough guy to fight against, wasn't it? Felicidades, Lucas, en el día de hoy, pero fue difícil la pelea. Sí, la verdad que sí, un rival bastante con movilidad, complicado, como sabíamos que era un, bastante, un rival complicado, pero acá está, en mi cintura. He, got, he finally got the belt, he says that it was a tough, very, tough rival and he had a lot of mobility in this fight. Did you think and feel as though you would knock him down about eight or ten times before he finally went down throughout the course of the fight? ¿Tú pensaste que lo iba a noquear ocho o diez veces durante esta pelea antes de que por fin eh, fue al suelo? Sí, yo pensé que iba a caer antes, pero la verdad que sentía mis manos él. Eh, yo la verdad que no, no sentí ni una. Eh, vengo bien preparado, pero 
pero bueno, es un rival bastante duro, lo conecté bastante duro en la cabeza y abajo, pero bueno, no, no aflojado. Sí, yeah, he definitely thought he, was, he had him a couple of times. The problem is that he's a strong fighter and he felt his power tonight. Did you ever hit a man that hard and have him continue? ¿Tú le das un hombre tan duro que ha seguido peleando? Eh, eh, Chop Chop Corley, nueve veces lo tiré y... Y bueno, hasta que se aflojó. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's had it before. He, uh, nine times the, oh, another boxer fell and uh, he still came up. Even though you dominated this fight, you've lost a couple of controversial decisions. Did you feel as though you were going to have to knock him out this evening? Ha perdido varias peleas controversialmente, pero pensaste que en esta pelea la tenía que ganar por nocaut? Sí, sí, sabía que tenía que ganar sí o sí. Yo dije, antes ha matado a morir y bueno. Y me, la vine a jugar. He said that Stewart died tonight. He had a win by a knockout, and that's what he did tonight. What would you like to do now, uh, uh, Marcos Medona, possibly, or the winner of, of the Garcia fight? ¿Qué quiere hacer ahora, Marcos Medina, o tal vez el, el que gane de la Garcia, de la pelea de Garcia? Cualquiera, cualquiera. Los grandes boxeadores ya tengo el cinturón en mi, en mi cintura. Y eh, ahora que venga cualquiera que me voy a preparar más duro y se le va a hacer difícil sacarme. <laughs> he says, he says anybody, because it's going to be very difficult to take that belt, so he'll fight anybody right now. Congratulations, Lucas. Un saludo para mi hijita Priscila, hija, ¿qué tal lo que te prometí a mi mamá? A todos los que están ahí en la casa de mi hermano, a Walter, a Soledad, a Jenny, a todos mis sobrinos, a Treleo, Las Mil, a toda la Argentina, ahí en Junín, a todos los pibes. He's definitely for a his daughter, daughter, daughter gimnasio, Priscilla, his mother, and all of Argentina, he dedicates this fight. Para toda la Patagonia, para toda Argentina, vamos, la concha su madre. <laughs> Patagonia, Argentina, too. All right, uh, Josie, first of all, how are you? Very courageous this evening. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm all right, I'm all right. Uh, uh, Matisse, you know, is a very key fi fighter. Uh, this is what uh, inactivity do to you. Uh, I am a bit ring rusty. That's not take anything away from uh, Lucas Matisse. He's a terrific puncher. He, he fought well. Uh, he came to fight, came to win, and he did very well. I'm not going to take anything away from him. However, I think my inactivity uh, resulted to the way I fought. I, I wasn't as sharp as I would have been. Uh, I didn't have enough strength as I would have, I would have been. I trained hard for this fight, uh, but because I haven't fought for a long time, this is like a year. Just one fight in the year and three yes. fights in three years. Three years, so that contributed to, to the way I fought tonight. I, think I gave a good fight, but I think I, I know I could, I could have done better. However, did Matisse did very well, you know, he deserved the win. Even though I was all right uh, with the knockdown, I was okay, I could continue. But the referee said I should, uh, uh, he would stop the fight, so the referee has the decision. You were hit about eight or ten times where you could have gone down. Where did you find the equilibrium internally to stay on your feet? I know this is the first time you've been down and the first time you've lost. Uh, where did you Where did you muster up the courage? Actually, uh, I, I am a, I, I can take a punch. However, I don't want to you know try and take it take a punch. Uh, if if I if if, the, if 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 my opponent land, I can take it, and he's he's really really punch hard. I think he's the hardest punch I've ever fought. Uh, he did very, very well. I've got, I got to give it to him. I, I know I can do better than I did tonight. That's the reason I'm, I'm so upset with myself, because I know what I can do. I know I can do much better than I did tonight. So, but however, I've got to con congratulate Matisse, because he gave a good fight. You know? uh, Josie, congratulations. We'll see you next time. I can see now why everybody has avoided you all these years. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, a good champion. I fall down and gets up. I'm going to get you up. you will. And I'll be back. We'll be back. Thank you.